Um, I think we're going to start with some questions. Is that okay? Yeah, of course. Okay. Do you want to? Yeah. So we wanted to ask you what your favourite memories were from Benson House and Collet House, because me and Sadie are both in Benson. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think my favourite memory was probably like the first day when I realised that I was, I mean, obviously I knew from over the summer, but like the reality set in that I was going to be in a house with my like three best friends, which was really, really exciting and like felt quite lucky, I suppose, you know? Um, so that was probably a highlight for me. And then also getting free periods in sixth form. <laughs> that, was, that was like a... <laughs> mind, mind blowing moment, I, I think, yeah. Uh, getting the toast, oh, yeah, toast <laughs> was quite fun. And I think we were given quite a lot of, or at the time, because you were what 13 when you start. Um, four, four, I think four, it's four, the yeah. 13, yeah, 13. 13. Yeah. Yeah. which is quite young, and you're given quite a lot of like freedom mm. slash responsibility, and you, you know, you're sort of like allowed to hang out in this common room together and you're allowed to make tea and toast and like obviously they're all simple things now but at the time it felt quite grown up yeah it was, it was kind of fun to be given the freedom but also like the responsibility to sort of you know treat it with not not make a mess or like not do it wrong kind of thing um mm. so yeah it's quite fun um i don't know what my favorite memory was i just remember like when i was in Collet House, no one wanted to be in Collet House that year. Like, <laughs> it, was real, it was a real dump. And like, no, no it was, it was. It was, it was, the bad it was, it was a bad house. And then, and then they like really like transformed it. And actually I had like the best time. It was like a real like motley bunch of people in, in, in our year. Mm -hmm. And then we ended up having a really good time and everyone like really got on. And it turned out to be like, I think a really good bunch of friends. So, um, yes, it's not really, I suppose it's not really a favourite memory, but that's kind of my overall memory. Yeah. Well, Call It, call it House, I don't know if you know, it's got like a new building now. It's been all like modernised and everything. So. Has it? Well, yeah. And there's no more you know. schoolhouse. It's Row now. So they oh. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's nice. There's quite a lot of new buildings for houses. So. Yeah. How's the new, the, there's a new girl's house built behind Benton, isn't there? Yeah, that's Trotman House. Yeah, that's it. That's that house is the best one, really. That yeah, girl. inside is really nice. Yeah, it's 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 amazing inside. Yeah. yeah. Do, you guys have, do you guys have any idea who Trotman was? He was head head of Mark. Yeah, he was head of something. I think. <laughs> <laughs> he was our headmaster he was head of, over there. He was the head of the school for us. Yeah. He was oh right. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's cool. Um, <laughs> We also wanted to know, like, what was your favourite subjects or teachers? And what do you think? Oh, sorry. What do you think it influenced? Did it influence any decisions um, in your life now? I think that's an easy answer for us. Yeah. <laughs> my my <laughs> favourite, my favourite subject was, well, my favourite teachers were Mr Stewart and Mr Borton. I don't know if they're still around no. all right r.i.p <laughs> <laughs> and i think my favorite subject was art just because um i felt uh like i got a lot of freedom there to kind of be really really creative and i felt it wasn't like um you know, that I, I I felt like I was trusted to kind of do what I wanted when I was in the art department. Like I, I just felt like, yeah, I had a lot of creative freedom and, and that was really fun for me actually. Like I remember, especially in my sixth form years, I spent like a lot of my like free time down there. Um, and I felt like it was a real like chance for me to kind of grow creatively. So I really enjoyed my time there. Yeah, and that was with Mr. Honey. Yeah, I think he's still is he still head of yeah art? he's um, yeah and Miss he's, he's not head of art, art now, anymore. but he's still in art. Mm. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, that I felt really good going there. That was really cool. It was like because I think we the art department that year when we were in our sixth form just been built, so it was mm. brand new, and they really yeah Mr. Honey and Mr. Monk made it a real kind of 
space that you could go to. Like yeah. you're saying, like in your free time or lunch or after school, whatever, you could go down and like, you know, there'd be like quite crazy projects going on. People like dissecting mice or like building. <laughs> it was quite a lot always happening in the art department. So it's mm. quite fun. I think my favourite subject was English. Uh, and I went on to, I did English literature as my degree. So I think it, you know, directly impacted my uh, mm. university choice. Uh, the teachers were, that I had was Mrs. Dickinson and Mr. Borton as well. And yeah, I think they just like, they really set us up or set me up on like critical thinking. And I think Mr. Dickinson particularly sort of ignited the first kind of, um, feminist flames in like how I think and stuff and you know I'm not like it's <laughs> not some sort of raging draw burning feminist but like got yeah, me th- got I am I mean maybe <laughs> but got me thinking you know in those sort of critical ways and from different perspectives and stuff and like that it's it's obviously much more of a soft skill compared to something like I don't know medicine or engineering all those like traditional things but just teaching you how to think critically when you're kind of 16, 17, 18, and you kind of, I took that into university and then took that into years abroad and living in different places. And then it just like, it just really sets you up in like how you think <laughs> basically through your life, which I think is obviously like incredibly important. I guess my favorite teacher was probably Mr. Brooks. I think he's still there. Yeah, uh, he's, still, he's, he's still here. Um, and he was just a bit of a legend because I suppose he, he just seemed really, really switched on. Everyone in his classes did really well. And he kind of didn't really suffer. He didn't really fall for any of my prep. Um, <laughs> he's always known when I hadn't done my prep and stuff. So, um, yeah, I have a few really fond memories of him. And I think he definitely was like led by example. And I think we always, I personally always wanted him to like me. Um, and I think that's something that's really interesting. Like as you get into life, like respecting someone and wanting their kind of, I guess validation. I think he was really good at that. Um, so yeah, shout out Mr. Brooks if you're watching this. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we wanted to ask you as well, Charlie, um, how did you juggle kind of your music career and school? And also did you ever perform in Stars in Their Eyes? Um, I did perform in Stars in Their Eyes. Um it all began. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, I did. I did. Um, I think I, I sang Corin Bailey Ray. Oh wow! Put, put your records on. Um, <laughs> I, don't, oh, that, I, don't I don't know. It was like one of my mum's favorite songs. Oh. But it was. I remember it was the same year that like my friends, like Rory did Backstreet Boys. Yes. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> I did. Yes, I did. I'm sure there's <laughs> cringy video footage of that somewhere. Um, and I mean, for me, juggling, so yeah, I, wa- I was kind of like juggling school and music. Um, and sort of at the beginning, I think it, it kind of went quite unnoticed because a lot of what I was doing was sort of really online kind of like things. You know, I guess at that time it was MySpace. Like I had like a quite active MySpace profile as some might have like an active TikTok now or whatever. Like I had like a really active MySpace and I was sort of posting a lot and like doing a lot of my kind of music like stuff online, like whether it be connecting with other artists or writing songs or just communicating, it was sort of like something that could happen like after school. Um, But when I kind of took a step into like performing real time, that was when sort of things didn't really begin to blur, but I took a kind of step towards that a little bit because I was playing shows when I was like 14 or 15, probably 15 um, in East London at like raves essentially. (laughs) So I would finish Saturday school and then my parents would like drive me to a rave um, on the weekend, which where I wouldn't perform until like 2 a.m. Um, and I'm really lucky that I had parents who were extremely supportive of me, but also extremely serious about my 
school work you know it wasn't like my music at that stage in my life didn't take priority over what I was doing in school it was very much like if you do your homework we'll drive you to the rave <laughs> that way it was, it was like a, you know that kind of a thing um and I think when I when I got to sixth form maybe it was like I had to maybe like sort of sacrifice a couple of sports games which maybe my teachers at that point in time were a little bit annoyed about but I think I knew in my heart of hearts that it was like best for me um but generally the balance was it was okay at that point in time when I went to university I, I went to art school um at UCL a place called Slade to study fine art and after a year of that, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to balance things anymore. So I left after my first year, um, just because it was getting to the point where I wasn't really going in very much. And it, it really felt like a, a waste of everybody's time. So I decided that I would um, quit um, art school and really focus permanently on music. Um, but yeah, I think if I hadn't have had like a supportive base around me it would have been harder to balance um but I still would have figured it out because it was just my passion that I really wanted to pursue you know just quickly on that I always ref not always reflect but I sometimes reflect on like when we were back at school and when Charlie was doing this I think what is quite strange about it is that like unlike most people who were like having a little bit of success and having record label interests we we'll probably be talking about it. Like me, Twiggy, Charlie, and a couple of other people like Millie and Jack Kenning were like best friends. Charlie was so low key about it. She would never like really talk about it. Mm. And it was very like something that she was doing completely on her own. Like, I mean, I'm sh I, would I would imagine that the college is like quite similar in its makeup now than it was then. And like, Charlie really was like an outlier, I suppose at that time, but wasn't really talking about it, mm. which I do, do think like speaks kind of volumes about her as a personality of someone who just kind of quietly achieves things and gets on with things. So, yeah, I, I would say like all Charlie's kind of musical success really is like a testament to her own kind of kind of work ethic um, rather than anything else beyond her. I do think that's kind of important to recognise. Mm. Mm. Thanks. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, you kind of <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I kept it very low key. I didn't want to be braggy, you know. I never thought that that was like a attractive quality in yeah. anyone. So I, I was really, yeah, just low key about it, I suppose. Yeah. Um. So when did you all know what career you wanted to take, and like what the like with the career you're in now and stuff? Uh, <laughs> do Do we know? Do we know this day? We're trying a few different things. Um, do you maybe you go first? Well, it's a bit of a weird one for me because I went to university and I did um politics and, and sociology uh, at New <laughs> yeah, Newcastle, and it was it was really fun, but I really didn't do any work, I did a lot of drinking and I got a 2 1, and uh, yeah, it was fine. And I was a bit kind of lost about like what I wanted to do, and I kind of thought that like the most important thing to me was money, um, just being honest. Um, and, uh, and it is still important, but it's like not really, I don't think it's a very good way to like base your whole like life around. Um, and I kind of had these really, like it, it is strange that like I kind of had, when Charlie, Charlie and I never really talked about work, but I always kind of thought about like what she was doing and how interesting it was. And I was doing this really crap job in Bristol uh, in cyber security recruitment don't do that um, and um, Charlie kind of called me out of the blue and was like hey I've got this idea and would you be interested in being my assistant on the road and that was six five and six years ago yeah. um, and then kind of as things kind of naturally developed like I joined her management company then I was working with other artists then the three of us decided to um, set up our own company a couple of years ago. Um, so yeah, I suppose it's a bit of a long winded answer, but I th how do we know what we we're gonna be doing? But I, I think it's just about finding something you're really passionate about and you really love doing. Yeah. And like focusing on, on that. I know that's such a cliche, but mm. um, I'm just so fortunate to work with my friends and I 
really do love music and the business of music. Um, mm. So, uh, yeah. I kind of, sorry, you go. No, you go. I, I kind of feel like, I mean, I knew that I loved music and I knew I, I wanted to do music, but actually when I started kind of making music and even once I signed a record deal, I sort of had no idea about like what the music industry was or the structure around it. Um, or actually even the multitude of jobs that are within the bubble of the music industry and like adjacent, adjacent industries. And I think, you know, for me, that is what's really interesting in hindsight. Like when I think about the career path that we've all kind of chosen and also like fallen upon, it's like, you if you asked me this when I was at school like you know what was what's your dream job and how did you get to it it's like I I don't I think when I was in school I didn't even know half of the possible jobs that were out there in Mm. creative industries and I think that's something that can really only be learned with time um I remember feeling that Uh, well actually I didn't really feel this but I know my friends felt that there was like a lot of pressure to like get a really great job and start making money Mm. and I think you know that's a reality of life like there is this sort of urgency to like go out in the world and become independent and make your own money and you know carve a path for yourself and of course that's still that's always going to be like an inkling an instinct that that we have and I think especially coming from a school like BSC it's like we're really kind of encouraged to go and be independent and take initiative and and that's great but I do also think that there's kind of um you know uh, merit in like taking pause for a second and and kind of learning about different paths outside of like okay banking investment banking like medicine accountant like In our industry alone, like, I think we have sort of come across so many jobs that we didn't even know exist or like jobs that we knew existed, but didn't really realize how much potential for creativity and also like financial, um, like, uh, what's the one? Gain. Gain, (laughs) their words. Like one example that we always talk about, right, is hair and makeup. Okay. So like, um, I think when I was in school, like when I thought about like somebody working in the beauty beauty industry, I always thought of it as like a very like localized industry of like, okay, like there would be a hair salon in town and like maybe somebody would go and like work, you know, and and, like do that. And that is like being a hairdresser. And obviously now like that there's YouTube culture and kind of like Instagram, Insta famous people, like I think generally people are more well-versed on on the scope of the beauty industry. But I think when we started working in in this industry, we were like absolutely astonished by like the career paths that people who work in like hair and makeup can build, whether that just be like having, you know, clients who are paying like an extremely ridiculous amount of money to get like their hair done or whether that, whether it's like people who kind of set up their own like schools, product lines, like, it's crazy and I never really thought about that and I think that comes that's also like the case for people who are art directors creative directors graphic designers merch designers there's just within our industry alone the umbrella is so huge so it's kind of insane to think that I thought I knew like what I wanted to do when I was like Mm. 17 or 18 because I think I hadn't even had the experience of the world and the experience of what doors could be opened within a particular field. Sorry, that was such a rambly answer. That was a a perfect answer. I suppose to add, going off of that, I think, I suppose just from my personal experience, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I had lived in a few different places, tried a few different odd jobs. I'd applied for some like jobs in London because I thought that was a thing. And then to be honest, uh, you know, Charlie presented an opportunity and I said yes. So there's nothing there's nothing more to it than like, you know, saying yes to an opportunity for me. But now that I'm in the industry and, and picking up on everything that Charlie was saying, like there are so many jobs within it and it can be the creative side and whether, you know, like Charlie's saying, it's 
creative director, music video producer, hair and makeup, like all those things. There are also the business side of it as well. And there are accountants, lawyers, uh, sort of legal experts, um, musicologists. musicologists, you have Sync publishers, teams. yeah, people licensing, like there's so Everyone many- Everyone who like, works in a record label. All the record label jobs, like there's so many different facets within it and you can still apply skills, but within a creative or entertaining um, umbrella. So yeah, there, I suppose, yeah, just to sort of summarise, like, there really, there are real jobs within the entertainment world. It's not all about stars at the front. There's, like, a whole industry behind yeah. it of people, you know, applying real skills and real knowledge and, and very smart switch on people. There's also a lot of idiots in the music industry. But there's a lot of idiots in any industry. Yeah. <laughs> but that is a really valid point. Sorry, we're kind of, like, going on a bit of a tangent here. Like, I, I think, like, when we were in school, like the entertainment industry seemed quite unattainable and I do think that has probably changed a little bit now because of the way social media has developed and grown and like you know there are so many more forward-facing like entertainment jobs which are very like evident and obvious to people who are just on social media platforms but to Twiggy's point like um yeah I mean I, I always kind of thought the music industry it was this like kind of guarded gated like thing that was really hard to get into and don't get me wrong like in certain areas yes but as she said like there are so many jobs that I just didn't even know existed mm -hmm. um within the music industry like which there are so many people doing you know um and I think it's important to kind of look into those jobs in whatever industry you're sort of um, interested in. Like, don't just look on the surface, like really mm. dig deep. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Um, we wanted to ask you as well about how uh, your life is different in LA compared to your life in the UK. <laughs> well, I don't know, I guess because we're all, <laughs> we're literally all, it's, we live together, we work together. Um, <laughs> it's basically Bishop Stalkford over here. Yeah. <laughs> not, it's not we're quite having it to see we, the movies. We also do <laughs> hang out with exclusively English people. So we have like a really, there's like 10 or 15 of us who are, who are friends, who are like expats, who weirdly we kind of know from London in a lot of cases as well. Like a few of our close friends who obviously, I mean, are in the creative industry, industries. But um, yeah, I mean, LA is kind of a, is a bit of a hub for the music industry. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it has made a lot of sense kind of being here. I suppose most of the obvious differences are, you know, the weather's better, but you have to drive everywhere. Everybody's nice. Um, Everyone's nice. And it's incredibly expensive. Yeah, that's true um, it's like you have to pay like 18 dollars for a salad like nuts are you yeah. joking um <laughs> so i guess those are the those what? are the key ta ta takeaways um but i mean we this year has been very very strange because we haven't really been traveling i would say um on a usual year you know charlie would be here in la maybe like four I mean, six weeks out of the year um, she would be traveling like pretty much consistently uh, for the rest of the time. And Twiggy would one either Twiggy or I would generally be accompanying on like most trips, not all tour dates, but a lot of trips. So we would be traveling a lot. We'd be in the UK a lot. Like even at the beginning of the year before COVID, I think we'd been back and forth like three times. So mm. we definitely, whilst we do live here, we definitely feel like we still have some roots in the UK. Yeah. Um, another question we wanted to ask was, um, what was the most important lesson you learned from the college? Uh, it's a bit of a difficult one. <laughs> I was going to give a I was going to give a cheeky answer. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, choose your friends because <laughs> 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 choose the right friends. No, I'm joking. Um, we've been friends. We were friends since literally day one. I think the most important <laughs> lesson. Um, well, no, I guess, I guess the serious side of that is that, like, you know, you really do make, can make friends for life. I think our situation is sort of quite special and unique, but 
But all, you know, we come home, not this Christmas, but every Christmas we come home and everybody from our year comes home and everybody's, you know, everybody's kept their friendships or there's little pockets of friendships and they really are, you know, friendships for life, I guess. And you can make that what you want. That can just be like a normal friendship or you can make it a weird friendship where you live and work. Culture. You can make it a cult. You can do whatever. You can monetize the friendship, whatever you want. But, um, yeah, I think it's not so much something I learned, but just something we're so lucky to value your friends. Yes, that's yes. Best. Value your friends. My thing, and maybe this is, I don't know, this might be a bit cheeky, but like, I think what I learned from, from the college is like to, um, you know, sometimes it's important to follow the rules, but sometimes it's really important to not follow them. And I think I learned that from the college in some ways, you know, I think there was a lot of focus on kind of like decorum and, um, you know, uh, being a team player, which I think is really, really important in life. Um, and then I think there are moments that where I learned like, that I needed to kind of ignore some of the um, instructions that were, were being given to me. And I think that's just like a skill that is really important in life. Like sometimes it's really important to like follow and sometimes it's really important to not follow. And I think the college, the dynamic of the college kind of like, it taught me like when was the right time to do each of those things. Yeah, that's cool. I guess. Um, oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, let's, move on, let's move on to another. They've answered it really well. I think Charlie, Charlie's answer is also. I want to know your answer though. I think, I, think, <laughs> I think this is more of a broad point, just about the school being, I think we should all acknowledge the fact that like Bishop Stortford College is a fee paying school in a really lovely part of the world. And I felt like, really supported and it's a very safe place to to like grow up be a teenager have fun with my friends mm. be able to have some really good teachers and you know play sport and do all these lovely things and I think you know not everyone has that and I'm really thankful for that and thankful for like the the, the chance to do all those things yeah yeah good. Thanks. 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 thank you yeah. um so Obviously, it's been so. It's been ten years exactly since you left the college. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we wanted to ask you where kind of you see yourself in ten years from now. Oh, oh. <laughs> How old are you guys, by the way? Seventeen. Sixteen. Ah! We're I'm, so old. I'm, I'm turning twenty-nine at the end of this year. Oh. Oh. Crazy. <laughs> um, in ten years. Okay. I mean, I think. Well, do you want to answer this? You like these kind of questions, don't you? You'll be back in England. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I think also we, so, so Charlie, Twiggy and I have a, uh, a management company where we manage developing artists. Um, and this is, sorry, this interview could go on for a really long time. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, I think one of my goals would be to help, um, like, raise up one of those artists and take them onto, like, you know, global uh, stardom and all the kind of things that accompany that. Um, and I also love to continue to, like, build Charlie's career. Like, she's one of, like, the world's most interesting pop stars, if not the world's most interesting <laughs> pop stars. And she's an incredible songwriter, music video director, uh, all-round uh, entrepreneur so I think it's just like continuing to you know fulfill and enable Charlie's like vision which is still super exciting to me and then also like you know build a business which is sustainable um where you know we're all able to take money out of it at different points and you know have Charlie has an amazing house like that's something that I want for myself as well at some point and um you know have a family and maybe move back to the UK for me personally just because I like really enjoyed my experience that you guys are having now. And like, if you have kids in LA, like all their friends are gonna drive G-wagons and they'll probably <laughs> like TikTok stuff. And, like, that seems 
stressful to me. <laughs> uh, so I would just like to have a little bit of like a taste of like what I experienced. And I know that's like really, really sad. And, no, that's but, okay. I, but um, you know, I also love London. It's like one of my favorite cities in the world. So if there was a way of me to spend some time in both, like I would love to be able to do that. The de- yeah, the definite danger of staying in America for 10 years and like, you know, if you, if we were to, I was to have kids or whatever is that they would be American and I hate American kids. <laughs> so I wonder if I have to get yeah, maybe like nip back to England. <laughs> no, I don't know. I think um, to be honest, I, I would say pretty much exactly the same thing as Sam. And I think that's why we're all working together and have a business together because we, you know, we want we're trying to build the same business along the same lines. Um, so yeah, I have nothing really more to add. Yeah, same. <laughs> Just grow, grow, grow our own business and keep exploring like what past my world could bring up. That's it, really. Yeah, great. That's lovely. Well, we wanted to say thank you so yeah, much. Thank for you so much talking to us and it's sharing been... everything with us. I have a question. Yeah. What do you guys? What do you guys want to do? Do you have an idea of what you want to do? Um, well, I want to go to uni, obviously. Um, I think I want to study something in media and then go to a job within the media. Uh-huh. Um, it's very, it's very broad, but, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I want to do law somewhere in London, so like Imperial or UCL, I think. Amazing. If you become an entertainment lawyer, you should move to America, you'll make a lot more money. Okay. <laughs> I'll look but, into that. <laughs> on the uh, on the they work on like percentages here so if you let's say you were charlie's lawyer you'd get five percent of everything she earns so it's not bad yeah that's good that sounds, that sounds good, good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you for thank having you us. so much we were actually i just honestly so you know we were really looking forward to this yeah. and we have been for a while and uh your questions were really great so thank you thank for you. taking the time to um, talk to us we also just wanted to be a bit cheeky and ask you if there'd be any chance for you coming to the college once COVID is. <laughs> Come and see us, all of you. <laughs> we, we actually, really, we've been trying to figure out a way to do like a talk in person for, I think it's been for like two years, two years now. <laughs> um, yeah. But because of like what my schedule used to be like it's been kind of impossible because there's always like moving dates and having to like fly to the other side of the world or whatever but um i think you know if the world sort of goes back to some kind of normality next year and things are still like a little bit calm for us we would love to come back like we really would and we'd love to sort of do something like this in person or just i don't know like Crash. Just hang out. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, parents, I, my parents still live five minutes walk from you know they're still in the place where we grew up um which is it's on maple avenue if you're like walking up to oh yeah town. right so i like you know obviously i haven't been home much <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know I'm, whenever i'm at home home i'm always walking through you know down mainstream road past the dining room like I'm, I'm still sort of keeping an eye out on everything so um yeah, I'm sure when we can travel, we'll come back. Yeah, Brilliant. we would. We'd love that. Yeah, that'd be so cool. <laughs> 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 well, let's do it. We'll try and find the time. Like, um, thanks, Jennifer, if you're still in the room for setting yeah, this up. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, let's try and make something happen for next year. Yeah. Have a great day, everybody. All right then. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.